Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Deep Three podcast. Uh, today's guest is Richard Westerland, the head men's basketball coach at Great Lakes Christian College. Hello, Richard. Hey, how's it going, man? Thank you for having me on. I, I really appreciate the opportunity to share. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. So uh, we'll start just like we talked about. Uh, you know, I want to start about what it means. Uh, what, what, what is Great Lakes Christian College, first of all? Yeah, so we are an NCCAA Division II program, uh, National Christian College Athletic Association. Um, not a lot of people have heard of that organization. Um, and I'll dive into a little bit of what the NCCA is in a little bit, but just to talk to you a little bit more about my program, I mean, we were, we're, we're a fun team to watch. I mean, we've led the country the past two years in three point field goals made, uh, three point field goals attempted. Uh, and, and we lead the country in forced turnovers, steals per game, blocks per game. So we play a really up and down system, which has been really uh, a big contributor to our success. Uh, the last two years since I've been here, we've won 39 games, back to back winning seasons. We've been ranked that entire time in the top four, including this year, getting our first ever uh, ranking at number one in the country. And we were ranked number one in the country for the majority of this season. Uh, and we were a favorite to win, you know, our national championship this year until uh, COVID uh, canceled our tournament, which was a bummer. Um, but we're excited. You know, we're building something special here at Great Lakes Christian College. We're expected to be one of the best teams in the country again next year. Uh, and, and so I'm excited to see how we continue to to grow and change our best. Yeah, you touched a few points that uh, you know I want to talk about. But first of all, is just the the style of play. I know you you preach that on Twitter. I've seen highlights of your kids, and I think it's uh, you know I'm for me as a stretch four or three point shooter. I'm like, oh man, I love that. You know, you just yeah. you, you guys just um, you know put up a lot of threes, and it's a high paced offense that a lot of kids you know they love to play in it. I think it's uh, it's great. And I know you've had a high school experience, right? You coached in college before, too, before this uh, job. And uh, how did you come about this, uh, you know, playing this way? Was it something that you just realized recently? Or was it something that you just liked from uh, from the get-go, um, you know, since you were coaching uh, high school? Yeah, so I always knew I wanted to play an, um, t- uh, uh, an up-tempo style. When I was in high school, uh, my brother, I have a twin brother who, you know, just got named to be a head coach at Division Three College. Uh, and, and we played on a, in a system that relied on four guards, playing up-tempo, the transition game. Um, so I knew I always wanted to play that style as a coach because I felt like it was just such a fun style to be able to play in the open court. Uh, where I really, you know, made it my own was, you know, I wanted to be a pressing coach. You know, when I first got into coaching, uh, Shaka Smart and the VCU Rams were – the big thing, you know, with their havoc style of play. So I got my start at a small Christian school in, in, uh, in Darlington, Maryland called Hartford Christian school. So we called it Hartford havoc and we were going to press and and run and gun. And so the pressing style has probably been like the biggest part of my identity as a coach is that we, I press wherever, wherever I've gone, you know, the last two years is really where I've become more three point centric just in the value that the three-point shot has had and the fact that I've had the, the, the personnel to be able to do it. In years past, I've had a, a lot more big men uh, where you know their skill sets wouldn't allow us to space the floor as much as I would like. And with the last two years at Great Lakes, I've been able to bring in the guys that I've always envisioned having, and it's allowed us to play this up-and-down style at an even higher rate, uh, which has allowed us to be so successful. Got you. Well, you just mentioned something that I really like, and I think it's it's a it's a great trait to have as a coach that you kind of adjusted to the kids that you had before. Because I know coaches that you know they're like, I want to play this way. Well, I mean, something's changed. You know, <laughs> you just can't uh, you know you can't play the way you want to play unless you have the players that fit that style, which is something that you've done a great job right now. You know, at, at Great Lakes of having these players that can do this. And uh, mentioned Shaka Smart. Yeah, I know VCU was recruiting me, and I was like, man, I really can, can I really play this style? You know, but uh, Anthony Grant was there. He was the head coach when I was coming to high school, like oh six or seven. And uh, I, I wasn't sure. Anthony Grant's a little bit different than, than, than Shaka, you know, in regards to that. But uh, 
definitely they had a very unique style. I have a few friends that played at BCU. That was, uh, I mean, it was actually fun to watch. I remember watching the 2011 Final Four. I was there. Uh, I was at the Reese's College All-Star Game, the senior All-Star Game for NCAA. So uh, I played in the game, and then we got invited to watch the Final Four. And I remember watching BCU, and I was like, oh, man, I could have been there, like, on the floor. It was crazy. You know, I was like, oh, yeah. God. But it was uh, – it was, it was a fun thing to watch um, during those times. I think it influenced a lot, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of college well, coaches and a lot of high school coaches, you know. And I think, like, that's the goal. You know, with, when I'm building my program, you know, I want to play a style that's attractive to recruits. You know, so a lot of recruits love playing in a up-tempo style where, you know, we love to say shoot first, ask questions later. You know, we want guys to have the freedom to make a play not just, you know, offensively, but also defensively to understand, okay, hey, we're going to play up tempo, we're going to press. Um, and it gives us, you know, a real fun style of play that recruits love playing in. And then also fans love coming to see, you know. So we've seen our attendance at Great Lakes go way up for our men's basketball games because of the way we play, because we play a, a style that everybody knows, hey, in a blink of an eye, you know, it could turn up real quick. You know, uh, and it's also a style for me that I believe in because I think it, it helps us win games and we're never out of a game. You know, we've had games this year in the last two years where we were down 33, down 25, down, you know, 28. And we've come back, you know, to win those games, you know, and, and or be in those games. So, like, with this style of play, we know we're never out of a game uh, because of how well we can shoot the three and then with our press, you know, I always say we're a 6-0 run away from blowing this game open or we're a 6-0 run away from getting right back into it, you know, and that's what's really allowed us to be successful is that we really believe in this philosophy and, and my players have, you know, really bought into the idea that, okay, hey, we're never out of a game and we can always win against anybody with this style. Yeah, you know, they say, you know, live, live by the three, die by the three, but if you add a press, uh, a high press difference to it, I think it really uh, it's it's a big bonus, you know, because you might get some some steals, some easy baskets uh, that, that are not necessarily threes, but it might be a two on one, three on two, you know, that type of situation. So uh, yeah, I mean, you're clearly never out of game, especially uh, at a high high pace, you know, high high number of threes that you shoot. Uh, it's very hard to be out of a game. And I think for I think it's it's hard if you play teams like uh, you know like the UVAs of the world, or they just really slow down. Uh, that's always been a really, really interesting comparison in college basketball. At all the levels, it's like you find really coaches that love zone, that love to press, and it, it's just such so interesting because in Europe you never find that. And, you know, it's like every coach has a style, but overall per country they kind of have like their own style. So you never yeah. really have this huge like differences as far as like style yeah. of coaching, style of play. Um, like you do, you know, um, like here, and it's it's pretty awesome. And it's good to hear that your attendance is up. I think that's awesome. I think uh, at the end of the day, you know, it's uh, basketball is a lot more fun when people are in there, you know, cheering you on. Especially when you hit two threes. I know how it is. One, two threes in a row. Yeah. The whole gym is just like forget the dunks. It yeah. just goes crazy. <laughs> and it, you know, it's it's interesting because like you'll have we play a lot, like a lot of teams now, like especially in our, our, our league, you know, in our league, we are in the last two years, we're 25 and five. That includes postseason, you know, and, you know, we, there's only been two teams that have been able to beat us, you know, uh, our rival Grace Christian university uh, in, in Grand Rapids and then Johnson, Tennessee beat us in the region champ or, or our conference championship last year. So there's really only been two teams that have beaten us, but now I'm seeing more and more teams try and zone us, uh, try and slow us down. You know, and it's it's funny, you know, for us, when we get a turnover, the first thing we say is, OK, we say, can we get a transition three? Because we'll take a transition three over a contested layup any day of the week. You know, so you'll see our guys, they have an open layup, but they're pulling up one, two dribble into that three and shooting it, letting it fly. You know, <laughs> and, and uh, but and a lot of people think we're crazy for it. And I hear commentators when they commentate our game. Oh, I'm sure Coach Rich isn't happy with that shot. No, well, that's a shot we work on every day in practice. I mean, we tell our guys, hey, let's shoot our transition threes. Let's shoot five to ten feet beyond the line. You know, like, we've got to work on it because if we're going to shoot those shots in the game, we might as well practice it. So it's funny hearing other people commentate our games that don't know 
really the way we want to play uh, because we're going to shoot the three, you know, and, and for us, it only takes one transition three to go down and then it like blows open. Like I remember last year we we're playing a game. It was like a 10 point game. We we're up 10. And then like within a three, no, it was like a four minute spurt. It went from 10 points to 40 points. You know, we had a kid that just went supernova, like hit eight threes in a row, transition threes. Uh, and, and we just like exploded. It went from literally 10 points to 40 within four minutes just because of our style of play. And that, that's just the fun part about our style. And it's, it's really cool to see our guys enjoy the way we're playing too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that kind of style of play, uh, I don't know if anybody on the team can be unhappy, you know. <laughs> Everybody going to get shots up and all that stuff. So two things I think that I took from that is definitely that I, I like when, when, when people kind of game plan for your specific team and style. I mean, that's a sign of respect. So I think that's, that, that's awesome that uh, you guys get that. Um, because you know how it is. So some, some coaches have their own style. And like, oh, yeah, we're playing this style. But once they face a really good team at, at their level, you know, and they start changing, then that's, that's, that's a pretty cool, cool sign, I think, and good feeling for you as a coach to be like, okay, like we're, we're that team. You know, we're that team. And yeah, you mentioned practice, actually. And how do you guys practice this, this type of style? Okay, I get a 5 on 5, you can do a lot of core pressure uh, type drills. But how, um, how do you practice as far as, uh, you know, as, as a shooter, I've always been big on take game shots. So how do you guys practice, uh, you know, all those, what you talked about, let's, let's practice our transition threes, let's practice our 10 feet behind the line threes and all this, all this mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, the big thing with us is like every day we start practice, we're going to do about 45 minutes to an hour of shooting. And a lot of coaches might think that's way too much time to spend on shooting. But to me, you know, the whole point is putting the ball in the basket. If you can't put it in the basket, you're <laughs> not going to win you know and so we've got to work on our skill set and if we want to build our game around shooting well stink we gotta we gotta spend some time shooting so we spend a ton of time working on you know three-point shooting i mean you know between you know our pitch backs or you know our flips to our transition threes to you know our side steps like you know we're spending a ton of time on each shot every day um to get our guys the reps you know so And, and, like, the reality is, like, it shouldn't be this way. But guys work harder defensively when they see the ball go through the net a couple of times, you know. So, and I know, it shouldn't be that way. Guys should always work hard defensively no matter what. But <laughs> You're just going to how it is. Like, I mean, it's it's the reality is, guys are going to play harder for me when they see that ball go through the basket, you know. Like, they're going to want to get another stop to get that ball back to be the next guy to shoot a transition three, you know. So, Um, so for us, we spend a ton of time on, on, on playing fast and getting those shot reps up at a high rate. And then the other part to it is, is defensively working a ton. Like we work a ton on, you know, just, Hey, let's just play, you know, like transitions. Okay. So, because that's the big thing we want to transition from defense to offense quickly, or from, you know, our transition game into our half court offense. because we don't want to waste any time we want to play intentionally and we want to play fast so you know our transitions are something we work very heavily heavily on in practice like even transitioning from drill to drill like very rarely why ever stop a, a stop of practice you know like we'll go from one drill to the next to the next to the next like we're not sit, sitting on the baseline talking through every little thing like it's okay hey we're into the next thing three on two two on one great boom we're into iowa state shooting Iowa State shooting into, you know, trap transition, you know, so we're popping one thing to the net. So like our practices are at a high tempo, which then will allow us to play at a high tempo in games. Absolutely. That's just a big point right there. And uh, how do you, uh, so a lot of threes means a lot of long rebounds. So defensively, right? And I mean, every time you have a chance to set a press, it's totally different. But let's see, on, on misses, turnover, stuff like that. Uh, do you come back on a set defense or do you still try to press the ball as soon as possible and get to this like havoc type defense, even on misses? Because like long misses might mean, you know, a lot of guard rebounds and stuff like that. Yeah. So um, off of free throws, we'll always press, make or miss. Um, Sometimes it, it will really depend on the situation. 
Uh, my team this year was a lot better at getting into pressing situations off of misses, you know, where, again, the whole goal is, you know, my goal as a coach is to get my guys to be able to execute and just not have to worry about it in a game, you know, like they can, they can set up the press and be able to fly around and not really have to think about it. So, you know, for us, are we trapping a ton off of misses? No, but we're still applying that pressure. We do have a couple of things in our half court where we'll, where we will do some junk defenses where we'll throw a trap out. You know, we call it five, you know, like now everybody knows what our half court trap is, but we call it five. So if you see five from us, it means we're going to go and trap wherever the ball is, you know, and, and like, we don't care if we get scored on, like, I won't say that we do care if we get scored on. We care if we like give up a layup or an open three, you know what I mean? But like, if we get a guy to take a quick shot and he makes it, like that's not a huge deal to us because the reality is it might be a good thing yeah. because they might get trigger happy. I've seen that happen, you know, like yeah. you a guy that's not supposed to shoot it, he makes it, and like two more shots after, I'm like, oh, that's bad, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so you know, getting them to play faster than what they want, or getting a guy to have to make a play, then he makes the play, so he thinks, oh, I can make that play again. Well, that's the best thing for us because <laughs> we love twenty percent three point shooters keep shooting threes, you know. So. Again, for us, it, it, it's been good for us. Like that half-court trap, you know, that really speeds people up. And like for our level, you know, we're really long. Like we start 6'2", 6'2", 6'5", 6'5", 6'8". You know, so like for our level, like there's D2s that don't have our length. You know, there's NAIAs that don't have our length. So we have real good length and athleticism. Um, I'd say we're probably elite at our level, and we would be considered a pretty good, you know, like with our length and athleticism. There's, we could rival some NAIs and D2s with the type of athletes that we have in our program right now, which has allowed us to be so successful with turning people over. Awesome. So since you mentioned, you know, the athletes that you have and the length, how is recruiting um, at this level, you know, compared to, of course, I think everybody knows uh, the D1 uh, stuff that they're familiar with. Um, you know, but I, I told you I have friends at the NAIA level and the D3 level, and I know recruiting is different everywhere. And I was just speaking on the podcast like two episodes ago with my ex-college coach who's now a scout for the NBA. And he was telling about recruiting, how different he was maybe 15 years mm-hmm. ago compared to now. But I'm just wondering for you at Great Lakes, um, you know, how, how is recruiting and, um, you know, how hard is it to recruit? Um, over, let's say, NAIA, uh, you know, NAIA kids? Yeah, so, I mean, I think the big thing that is the the biggest challenge for us is getting people to understand, like, how good our level is. You know, not a lot of people have heard of NCCA schools, um, but if you're looking at the top NCCA schools, they're beating NAIAs, they're beating D2s, you know, like, they're competing at a high level. So, like, when, I, when I'm recruiting a kid, I'm letting him know, look, we're going to play some of the best NAIAs. I mean, we, we played, I believe it was seven NAIAs this year, and five of them were in the top 20, you know, and every single one of those games were, you know, close games. You know, they were competitive games, you know. So, again, we're playing high-level competition, uh, and, and, you know, we're competing with that. So getting guys to understand, like, okay, you're not coming and playing in a weak league, you know, and, and also getting high school kids to understand, look, you probably won't play right away, you know, because if you look at our roster, we've built our roster a lot off of junior college kids. We've done really well with junior college kids and transfers. Um, that's allowed us to be really successful. Um, so like a high school kid coming as a freshman competing with that 21 year old junior, oh, I'm sorry, that, that 18 year old is going to need to grow up a little bit before he can really play, you know, so understanding and getting kids to understand like, you have to grow with the program. Like you don't win a lot of times with freshmen. You win with juniors and seniors. So getting those guys to want to, okay, hey, I'm going to compete. I'm going to get better. I'm going to learn, you know. Um, so that's probably been our biggest challenge is just getting guys to understand, you know, our level. Financial aid wise, you know, we do a really good job. Even though we cannot give athletic scholarships, you know, we have a little niche where we ha- do really good packages for guys coming from like full Pell situations. Um, so guys who, you know, are coming from a lower socio, uh, uh, socioeconomic background, 
we tend to do a lot better in their financial aid packages. So, you know, we can compete well with NAIAs and D2s with that because typically our packages will be very similar to, to those. So then it's just, okay, what's your priorities? Is it playing? Is it facilities? You know, is it, you know, wanting to play overseas? Is it your major? Like there's a lot of different factors for, you know, a lot of kids and you know this better than most, like you probably had plenty of teammates that didn't choose the school because of, you know, the school, they chose it because of the basketball program and then they figured out the rest, you know? So it's really just trying to get kids to understand, okay, who we are and what we're about um, and getting them to say, okay, look, just because we're NCCAA doesn't mean you can't have a big time experience. Absolutely. And the thing with the freshman, I think that goes for any level. Um, it, it was it happened to me too. You know, I think you just got to realize it that um, no matter where you go to play college, uh, what level, it is a step up. I don't care where you played as far as high school goes. Uh, you know, you, you just become a freshman again, just like it was from eighth to ninth grade. You know, just you, you hit this barrier where uh, a lot of people are stronger. You know, a lot of guys are ready. You know, they're ready for almost the next level or the pro or whatever it is. So that's huge. I think that's huge to to make people understand that. It's, it's very hard. I mean, uh, I've, I've talked to kids before too, and it's the same thing, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go a level down because I can kill there. I don't know. <laughs> really? Yeah. Have you watched him play well, like often? And, and that's what I'm telling some recruits now. Like we, we, you know, had some kids that were some D2 transfers that wanted to talk to us. And they're thinking that they could come in and impact right away on our roster. Well, you know, we've got a couple all Americans coming back. You know, we've got some, some, in my opinion, we got pros coming back. You know I mean? I I think we got a couple pros on our roster right now. And I think that those kids got a little overvalued in the recruiting process the first time where they went up too high of a level that, you know, they're not just going to come in and kill right away. You know, and I think that's the challenge is, and, and especially today for like guards that are between like five ten to six, two, like, it's so saturated with guards nowadays. You know what I mean? Like it's so hard for those smaller guards to realize, okay, Hey, like it's gotta be the right fit, you know, like, cause again, I've seen a guard that I think is great. Okay. And, and I'll, I'll kill thrive for me, you know, but you know, uh, another program thinks he stinks, you know what I mean? And, and so like, that's going to be like the challenge is, how do you separate yourself and make sure you're finding the right fit for you? Yeah, I mean, like we talked about earlier, the fit the fit is huge uh, when it comes to college basketball. And uh, now I do see the Nike logo. I know you guys are. So as far as infrastructure, uh, you know, the gear, it seems like you guys have whatever, I don't know, certain D2 schools have, right? I mean, I, from what I've yeah. seen online and from what I've talked to you uh, before, you guys are – up there so there's no like oh i'm taking a step down so like i'm paying for my own gear or something not really i mean you have elite elite oh yeah (laughs) yeah i mean we we take care of our guys i mean like when i say we offer a big time experience like although we're a small college you know like the gear pack we gave our guys this year uh just for example they had seven dry fits okay they had two sleeveless three short sleeve two long sleeve they got two jump seats they got uh, Nike slides. They got a Nike beanie. They got two pairs of socks. They got a backpack. They got uh, they got a short sleeve hoodie. They got shorts. You know, like we're going to give them that Nike swag. You know, I, a, a lot of my coaching friends joke with me that says we've got that Kentucky budget when it comes to gear, which we don't really, you know. But, uh, you know, we certainly make sure our guys have plenty of stuff to wear um, because, again, they're big representation of our school. They're the, they are, in my opinion, the biggest marketers for our school. When we have guys go back into their communities and their high schools and talk to their friends saying, Hey, I love Great Lakes Christian college. That helps us immensely in recruiting, you know, because it can get us more leads. So, you know, gear is just one part to that in our, in our philosophy, like, Hey, we want to make sure our kids have the best gear. And, And when we give them the best Nike stuff each and every year. And a joke I use with recruits too is, by the time you leave, if you stay here four years, by the time you leave, you have enough gear to open up your own Nike store. <laughs> That's sweet. Yeah. You know what? I don't think I ever got that much stuff overseas. Besides, I made my first year in Italy when we had the, uh, 
new contract. Like they, they give us some stuff, but uh, yeah, I don't think I ever got that much stuff overseas. Like college, college is different. So that's why I wanted touching that because uh, it can be a big deal for kids. I think it's, it's a lot of, uh, it's actually a lot of money that way, you know, if you, if, if you think yeah. about it, you know, the gear and stuff like that. It's pretty the awesome. Gear. And so, then another thing that we hit on too, you know, not only just with gear is food, you know, like I know a lot of like, for guys especially, they want to make sure they're eating good, you know? So, like, on the road, like, we always do pregame meals, always postgame, you know? And postgame meals are typically sit down, you know, like, when we go to Nashville, we always go to Hattie B's Hot Chicken, you know? Or we're going to Olive Garden, getting that catered in. Or, you know, we're going to Texas Roadhouse. So, we're going to a lot of really cool places to eat, a lot of good places. Whenever we go anywhere into a new city, we're typically finding, like, that local place that everybody loves you know so we feed our guys really well on the road too which I, again nobody wants to to be hungry when they're playing or, or after they're playing so we make sure that we take care of them uh really well with food as well that's that's great that's awesome right there and uh it's, it, what i find really cool right now i found a lot of good stuff too and uh, a lot of new things that i just learned uh it's, it's pretty awesome that i think you guys are basically giving them, you know, the same experience as like a D2, like we talked about, because um, a lot of this conception are like, oh, well, I go down and I don't, you know, have this, have that, have this. And, you know, you just hammer that down as far as hey, we have this and we have that, and, you know, we, we have all this stuff. And um, now how, how's the campus? Uh, I know you guys are a small school, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have a we have a small campus. It's really tight knit. You know, a lot of schools talk family. You know, but for us, we really we really live that. You know, so uh, we have a lot of room to grow on our campus. We have uh, 122 acres. So you know, our goal is as we continue to grow as a as a college, that we'll get, be able to continue to expand and, and be able to do some new building projects. Um, but we have the whole infrastructure that you're going to need. We've got our gym on campus. We have the dining hall. We have the dorms. You know, a lot of those things might some kids take for granted. But, you know, I've coached at schools in college that didn't have gyms, that didn't have dining halls. You know what I mean? So I've learned not to take those things for granted. But at Great Lakes, we have all of those things, you know, and we have a staff that really cares about their students. Um, you know, I, I say it all the time. Our president's leadership filters down. You know, our president, he eats lunch with the students each and every day, you know, to build relationships with them because he wants to be in the trenches with the students to know, okay, Hey, what's your story, you know, and it's your journey, our focus, you know what I mean? So um, our campus is small, it's tight knit, but with that, you're going to have a lot of people pouring into your life and investing in you. Um, and I think that's what you want in a college experience is because you're going to be investing, you know, money, investing time. You want to get a return on that investment, you know, and at Great Lakes Christian college, I feel like there's a huge return on investment just with the people and the relationships that you're going to build here. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, you mentioned earlier how, you know, your guys going back and uh, maybe not a lot of people agree with this or maybe they do, but I think that the athletic teams, especially basketball, football, uh, you know, they're the image of some colleges. Um, you know, we're not getting, getting to that pay stuff, but, like you said, it doesn't just bring you athletes back, right? So you have maybe one of your players going back to high school, trains with those kids and walks around, around you know, around his little town. And uh, you, you might get one, two students from that thing, you know, where where that scholarship or whatever you gave the kid, you know, comes back to, to uh, you know, to your school. And I think it's that's why it's important to be well represented and, you know, take care of your, your athletes, uh, you know, like you said, with the Nike stuff and, and all that good stuff because uh they're you know like it's like a brand ambassador basically yeah i mean i think without question you know and i know just with great lakes the last two years with everything we've accomplished with our men's basketball program it has been a huge marketing tool for our college you know that we have the number one ranked team in the country or we have a top three ranked team in the country we've gone to back-to-back -back national tournaments you know that's exciting that's excited you know our alumni base you know our donors have been giving you know uh we we've gotten more alumni to come back and connect with the school because 
of what we've been doing in athletics, you know? Um, so I think there's a lot of positives to athletics. You know, I, I know our applications have gone up a, as we continue to succeed, you know, men's basketball, we've gotten a ton more interest in our program because we've gotten better. Um, so again, I think you're spot on when you say, you know, the basketball, cause we don't have football, We're, you know, it's just not what we have, but you know, for schools that don't have football, the basketball team is the team, you know, and, and, you know, I think that, you know, for us, especially our men's basketball team has been a huge part in our marketing plan as we're continuing to try and grow as a school. Awesome. And now I want to get back to the basketball part. What do you guys do in the off season? I know uh, I've talked to other colleges and I feel like everybody's somewhat the same. So I just wanted to see if there's uh, different rules in the NCCA or uh, what do you guys do in, uh, during, during, not during this time, but you yeah. know, in a regular, regular year, what do you do during this time? You know? Yeah. So, I mean, at this point in our off season, typically, you know, we'd be in our off season lifting, you know, we, we like to do, we don't lift in a full team capacity. We try and do it in, in smaller groups. So we're doing lifting groups of six to eight. Um, so that group can some build some accountability and we can get more individual attention with each athlete. So we're doing lifting groups. We're doing skill workouts uh, about two to three days a week. And then we're doing uh, different open gyms two to three days a week as well. Um, open gyms will have different rules, whether, you know, it might be, you know, one count shooting, which for us, one count is we really value catch and shoots. So you get an extra point if you hit a catch and shoot three, you know, or maybe the rule is, you know, we're working all on, you know, uh, off ball screens, you know, so we do different rules in our open gym. We don't just do a straight up and down pickup style game. We like to work on some different things in our open runs, um, you know, and then we're doing a lot of just like individual investment as well you know those one-on-one -on -one meetings which we find so important to build those relationships and really just trying to say, okay hey I like to say you know in season's all about the team off season's all about the individual you know so if we got a six eight big who tells me hey coach I want to shoot threes next year cool Evan you let's get you work in the gym and get you working on shooting threes and if you can hit you know 60 percent of your open catch and shoots this in, in practice I'll let you shoot threes in the, during the season. So, you know, we try and make our off season all about the players' development, you know, and and helping them grow in the way they want to be as players. Because we also know too that, you know, our players come to us to 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 win a championship and be developed, but also they have personal dreams of playing professionally. Most of our guys do. So, we want to try and help facilitate those dreams as much as possible. And if they feel like they have certain skill sets they want to work on in addition to what we've given them, then we're going to empower them and try and help them achieve those things. That's great. I was going to touch on that, see how you deal with maybe some of the bigs that don't shoot threes and, you know, what's your approach. And I know uh, when I was in college at Mason, I think we had to do like a five minute drill and you had to hit a number of, a number of threes in those five minutes to be able to shoot threes in the game. So your approach is if you can shoot 60% of them in, in, in practice, catch a shoot, then you're allowed to shoot them in the game. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, I mean, we, we, we work, we, we make all of our, like our guys all do skill development together. So like when, you know, we don't break up bigs and quicks when we're doing our shooting drills, like whatever shot we're working on, everybody's working on that shot, you know? So like if we're shooting a, a 35 footer, you know, our six, eight big who, isn't shooting a high percentage he's shooting them too we want to get in the same reps so um you know so again we we're pushing our guys uh each and every day to get better shooters and like we're actually installing something new this year uh for our for guys who want to have that green light like you know for us we we say shoot first ask questions later but we want our guys to earn that right too so we're putting something called the green light uh shooting license and i got that from uh, Arkansas's women's basketball coach, Mike Neighbors, he does it with his team where guys have to go through a certain shooting series uh, every week to earn their green light license. So we're going to do that this year to just help hold uh, some guys accountable um, and keep guys in the gym is really the big thing. You know, we want to try and encourage a culture where we're going to keep getting better each and every day and a culture of gym rats, you know, so um, so we're trying to really push that this year. That's really cool. I had no idea, but I will look this up. I definitely want to know all these drills and see uh, see how I can get there. You know, I think it's uh, it's a really cool idea, and uh, you know, 
that way, uh, you know, you have to earn, like I said, you have to earn it. You know, you have to earn. You can't just come here and be like, hey, I want to shoot threes because everybody's shooting threes. Uh, yeah. You know, you can't have that type of mentality. But that's uh, that's pretty cool stuff. And now, uh, lastly, I want to get into, like, the half-court offense, right? Uh, so I know you, you want to shoot fast. And then uh, you get fast into your half-court offense, like you said, right? I mean, uh, yep. you have a quick transition to that half-court offense. Uh, do you rely a lot on the same thing to shoot in threes or you have a certain uh, idea once again the half court that you really want to hammer down? Yeah, so we're a lot more principle based um, in our half court offense. Um, you know, I think our base would be considered dribble drive, you know, just because that fits our personnel so well. Um, but everything we're trying to do, I try and incorporate some pro concepts as well. Again, you know, part of it is we want to get our guys ready to be able to play overseas. So we try and incorporate concepts that we might see overseas, you know, or in the professional game. So, you know, we have some different Princeton concepts, some point series concepts, some pistol series. So we have some different series that we feel like flow really well um, from our dribble drive into that or from our transition right into a certain series. Um, and that allows us to play quick while still, you know, getting certain guys shots because yes, we are an equal opportunity team, you know, in some ways, because we had six guys average more than, you know, 11.5 points per game, you know, but, uh, we still want to make sure we're getting our best players, the ball as much as possible, you know? So, you know, a lot of the stuff we run is to get our, our best guys, the ball in their hands and letting them make the plays. And then if that guy makes a play for somebody else, great. But I'd say in our half court, you're going to see a, a very dribble drive, uh, heavy offense going with some spread ball screen sprinkled in with some Princeton concepts is really what you're mostly going to see from us. Nice. Nice. I mean, uh, yeah, dribble drive fits uh, any kind of shooting team, you know, if it, once you drive and especially if, if you have kids that can really drive, uh, you know, they draw the help, and then once the ball gets moving, then you're probably going to end up with open three, honestly. Uh, at least what I've seen in, uh, in pro basketball overseas, you know, I think most dribble drives end up with open threes, you know. Okay. So it doesn't mean that you just, like I said, you just play fast doesn't mean that you got to play out of control or you don't have to pinpoint, you know, hey, I want to get this guy the ball and then let him decide is it is it a good shot for him or should he drive now or. You know, get get your best players the ball, like you said. But uh, to, to me, it seems that your advantage is uh, some of the strength in numbers, right? I mean, when you have six guys that can average you know, 10, 10 plus points per game, then uh, most likely you're going to have three, four guys on the floor at all times that can really score the ball. Yeah. And our goal is, you know, like we have those different mismatches. So can we get those mismatches in space? You know, because we are a team that is very gifted in space um we've got guys who can put it on the deck and create their own shot you know i think you know a lot of we are probably a little bit more iso heavy than i would like you know but again we have shot makers we got dudes who can make shots that nobody else can make so you know we know if we can get these guys in space they can win that one-on-one -on -one matchup you know and, and you know one-on-one -on -one matchup winning that one-on-one -on -one matchup doesn't always mean they're going to score it but it could mean they draw help and we've kept the advantage and we shift that advantage on to the next guy, you know? So really the whole goal is can we create an advantage where we get the defense in a help situation? And then once we have them in that help situation, can we keep them in rotation? You know, so that's really, you know, our main goal. Uh, and with, when we have, you know, three, four or five guys on the floor at a time that can put the ball on the deck, dribble pass and shoot. You know, that's made it very challenging for other teams to be able to stay in front of us. Um, and so, you know, again, we're looking at different ways to be more efficient. We averaged 85 points per game this year. You know, our goal next year is to average 120. I know that sounds crazy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but 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 that's the goal. <laughs> wow. That's, that's, that's a big jump. I mean, what, what can you do? You already, like, you press, you shoot a lot of threes, and you just do everything just faster. So, yeah, I mean, that's the big goal is, you know, so I, I've been talking to a lot of coaches who like playing fast. And I think that where we need to play faster at is in the transition game, you know. And, and so we're going to look to create more possessions 
by getting the ball up the floor a lot, a, a lot quicker, especially when teams make a basket on us. I didn't think we always got the ball out of the net quick enough. Um, so, you know, we're hoping to make this look like we're not going to be like Loyola Marymount from the eighties, but we want it to look like Loyola Marymount from the eighties, if that makes sense, you know? <laughs> so uh, we're going to try and play fast and, and get up and down and, you know, try and hang 120 every night. Good question. So do you have the guys jump to get the ball in it or not? No, no. This year we, we had them, you know, just get the ball. But like, again, like our transitions, you can watch it. Like, and that's something that, that we were timing, you know, like in this off season, I watched almost every one of our games. Uh, and when we would get scored on how quick we would be to get the ball out of the net. And then not just that, but those guys, our wingmen, their first three steps after we've been scored on were those sprints or were they just walking up the floor, you know? So we're going to look to try and adjust that transition a little bit better. So that way we can advance that ball in the pass and be more, a lot more intentional uh, of putting the defense on their heels. Okay. Because my first day of Poland, I had a coach that he wanted to play fast. I think we have five seconds or less to get the ball to 3.9. Uh, which is very unheard in the pros, uh, especially in Europe. And we used to play very fast. Uh, but we had to jump to get the ball out of the net, and we only were allowed to only put one foot outside the line. So, like, one foot had to be still, like, in the air, and then one outside and just outlet and then sprint. You know, the other big has a sprint right uh, right under the rim uh, just to create some space. But uh, I, I was just wondering because we had the – that's what we're doing. We're doing a lot of five and zero there. And he was big yeah. on that. He'd like stop practice to start yelling. He's like, ah, oh, jump and get the ball out of the net. I'm like, God, hey, come on, he's made a basket. Like, yeah. And we get the ball yeah. out and just step out. And it was like, oh, like, come on, just you don't want to be under the net when that ball goes in. I'm like, I don't want to be there. Let me just sprint and yeah. transition. So I was yeah, the, to have something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the guys I've been really talking to the most about trying to figure out how to play faster. Uh John Henry from William Penn University in Iowa. Uh, they led the NAIA in scoring. They averaged 100 points a game this year. Um, Nat Driscoll from North Florida has been another one that I've gotten a lot from. And then uh, Arkansas, uh, Mike Neighbors, uh, the women's basketball coach there, they play, uh, they call it functionally fast. Um, so those are three coaches that I've been talking to a lot on trying to work out how to uh, how to play faster because I think if we can combine that type of pace – with our press, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. And we're going to look a lot like Loyola Marymount from the eighties. And so, um, and that's really, you know, again, everybody likes scoring, you know, uh, when you score 120 points, you're going to give a lot of guys opportunities to score, which means we can keep a lot more guys happy too. True. <laughs> hey, I know you have to keep them happy now with all these transfers. I think I was looking at a portal. Some, some friend was telling me, I was like, Oh my God, that's a lot of kids that want to, Leave college. Yeah, I, um, imagine how it's going to be next year with, you know, half of the kids who are committing to certain schools haven't even been on campus to see those campuses because of, you know, what's all going on right now. So I think it's going to be interesting to see, you know, the fallout from this year with transfers. I think it's going to be, you know, a ton next well, year. Well, what'd you do uh, with the recruiting? I know uh, a few friends of mine were doing like Zoom stuff and like uh, FaceTime and uh, like virtual tour to campus. Is that, is that what you guys do too or? Yep. Yep. We've been doing, you know, FaceTime and Zoom, you know, that that's really what we've been been utilizing to to show our recruits the campus. We've been working on doing some different social media content, like talking about our culture, doing culture videos. We've been doing different highlight videos to show like our style of play. So we're trying to use the resources we have available to us um, to try and again, just show, you know, recruits, you know, who we are and, and what we're about, you know. So um, obviously it doesn't replace that you know, on campus and, you know, face-to-face -face feel that you could get from, uh, you know, on-campus visit. But given what we've got, you know, that's that's really what we've been trying to do is just trying to make the best of the situation. Absolutely. And I can mention, I think it's uh, it's going to be hard for the, especially for the kids. I think coaches, you know, you probably have seen those players live. You know, you're very familiar with, uh, you know, who you want to bring in and all this stuff. But the kids, you know, if they didn't have any visits or they were planning to, you know, have about I don't know, one visit, they have one visit in the fall and they have one, two, three, four in the, in the, in the spring, then it's, it's really a tough, tough decision, you know, and they could miss out. Like you said, they could miss out, uh, pick the wrong school. And there, there could be a lot of transfers coming out next year. I think that's, that's mm -hmm. 
um, who knows? Now they might just waive us. So the NCA, at least, they, they're thinking about waiving that. I think that will be uh, that will be a disaster waiting to happen. <laughs> Maybe like in the pros, you know, these kids are going to bounce around. It's like, oh, I had a good season. Now I'm going to Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I think it's interesting because I think that's just the culture of of where we're at now. You know, kids bouncing from team to team. Like, you know, at least when I was playing in high school, it wasn't that popular of an idea to transfer from high school to high school. You know, I. I couldn't tell, I didn't know too many guys who would transfer from one high school to the next unless their parents moved, you know, and, and nowadays you're getting kids going to three, four high schools a year or, or not a year in their career, you know, so I just think that, you know, now you're going in with the mindset of you're building your program on a two year calendar, not a four year calendar, you know, because so many kids are going to are going to end up transferring after one year or two years. So it's almost like you're a junior college coach every year. I have so much respect for what JUCO coaches do because it's definitely a challenge. And now a lot of four years are in that same boat of they got kids transferring out every year. So you're, you've got a lot of turnover. So, but I mean, you know, this, the, the best teams are the ones that can retain their core and, and keep a good group of guys playing together, you know? And I think that's where we've been successful is that, you know, we haven't had a ton of guys uh, transfer out out of our core. You know, we've kept our core of eight to ten guys together uh, over the last two years, and that's what's allowed us to be successful. And even going into this year, you know, we're retaining, you know, our entire roster is coming back. We didn't have, you know, one guy transfer out this year. So um, having that has made it, you know, really special for us to be able to say, okay, now in recruiting we're getting guys that, you know, fit this piece that we're missing you know so um but again I think that's the challenge for all coaches can you retain your recruits you know it's not just you know it's not just recruiting new student athletes in I think it's also recruiting the student athletes you have currently to say okay hey I call it on-campus recruiting you want to make sure you're providing an experience that recruits and your players want to keep being a part of and if you're not constantly providing them a great experience uh, or an experience that they want to be bought into then that's where you're going to see a lot of transfers, I think. So for us, we're trying to really focus on not just recruiting new student athletes, but also retaining the ones we have. Gotcha. Well, All that, that really makes sense. That was, those are great, some great points right there. You do have to recruit the kids they have, you know, make sure they, they, they have the attention they need, uh, you know, on and off the floor. Uh, because I know some coaches are just uh, very basketball oriented and like, uh, as soon as you step off the floor, you just go. <laughs> You know, they only care yeah. about basketball. And uh, it's important now Now in this day and age uh, with social media and everything, you know, kids, they, they want that attention. You know, they, they want to feel loved all the time. So uh, it is a lot more work for a coach, though. Like in your position right now, it's, <laughs> it's yeah. a lot more work. <laughs> and uh, but do you have kids that uh, ever try to go up and then transfer up or something? And then uh, did you have to deal with those type of situations too? So, you know, I had a I had a kid this last year that, you know, tried to to uh to transfer up and uh it ended up not being the best situation for him. Um I'm not saying we won't run into that again. Uh but you know, it looks like he he'll probably be coming back to play for us this year. Um but you know, with us, the majority of the guys we're bringing in are are JUCO transfers. So, most of them aren't wanting to to leave for their senior years, you know. So, um, you know, that's been, you know, a plus for us that we haven't had to worry about guys transferring up. Um, but I also think, too, we provide an experience where guys believe that their goals can be met where they're at. You know, and I think that's the big thing. And, you know, some guys, they want to transfer up, I guess, because they don't know if they're going to their goals are going to be met where they're at. I think we provide a program in a place where, you know, our guys really believe and I believe that everything that they set out to do and those goals they set for themselves can be achieved here at Great Lakes. You know, um, something as simple as, you know, guys, you know, getting the opportunity to play overseas, you know, like, uh, you know, this because of our relationship, like I work hard to try and get my guys those type of opportunities to get them seen, you know, um, whereas you, not every program will work hard for their guys to, to get overseas, you know, and, and that's something that's important to me is, you know, I want to see these guys graduate. And then after they graduate, I want to see them achieve their goals. And if that means playing overseas, well, stink. I'll get on the phone and talk to whoever I need to talk to to get their film out there, to get their resume out there, and 
you know, I tell them, it's not a guarantee. There's no guarantees in life, right? But you're going to have a coach who's going to work relentlessly for you to see that you get noticed. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's uh, that's very important. You know, you never you never know which kids can make it in the pros or not. I've seen kids that can really play and they never made it in the pros, but you're just giving them a chance, you know. So I think that's the greatest thing they can do. You know, once they graduate, you try and give them a chance and then uh, uh, see what happens going forward. It's really out of your hands. You know, all you, all can you control is just you know, giving them a chance. Well, Richard, uh, I just want to thank you very much. I think this has uh, been a a great episode so far and I think the, um, everybody learned a lot I learned a lot and um, I really appreciate your time and uh, we'll have to come back some uh, some other episode and just uh, slowly just talk about your press and uh, only your offense that's uh, the, the two things we gotta go in depth at some point absolutely man yeah I appreciate you having me on and I look forward to coming back on and, and, and talking some more with you this was a lot of fun sounds good Richard I really appreciate it thank you